Today I'm going to show you how to use two strobes to create both a high key and low key beauty look. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and I'd like to begin by talking about the differences between high key and low key lighting. So what do those terms mean? Fundamentally, high key lighting is when an image is made up of predominantly lighter tones. So in other words, there's not too much in the way of shadows. However, when you go to a low key image, it means most of the image is predominantly darker tones, more shadows, a lot of depth and dimension. So when I'm thinking about the moods created by these two styles of lighting, I'm thinking high key means uh, bright or happy, upbeat, ethereal, any of those descriptors are a perfect indication of when I'd wanna grab high key lighting. And right, now let's go to the opposite side. Let's go with low key. I think of dramatic, sculptural, dark, mysterious. And so if that's what I'm looking for out of a photograph, well then I gravitate to low key lighting. You can create high key or low key lighting no matter how many pieces of gear you have. So even if you just have natural light, one strobe, two strobes, or 10 strobes, you can use the light and shape the light to be either a high key look or a low key look. All right, so what I'd like to do in this video is take you through how I use two strobes and I make little changes to take the image from something really glowing and really high key to suddenly really dark and dramatic. All right, let's talk about the lighting. We're going to begin with our main light. Now, if I want to create a high key image, I need to create minimal shadows. And to do that, I want to have my main light more centered on my subject's face, a little bit flatter on, because that reduces the amount of shadows. And so right now I have my beauty dish placed in a paramount lighting position. Paramount means that the shadow underneath her nose is small and centered. All right, so I've got that position of light. Now I've chosen a beauty dish because a beauty dish is both soft and flattering on the skin, but adds a little bit more pop and contrast to the image. So we're going to begin there with strobe number one. Okay. All right, so you can see that there are minimal shadows on her face. There's still a little bit underneath the chin and nose, but we're going to talk about that in a moment. But fundamentally, what's making this image not high key, what's making it a little bit darker, is the background. Now, even though I have chosen a savage super white background, because of fall off of light, it looks dark, it looks gray. So in order to achieve a white background in this instance, I'm going to add my second strobe, which is a bare bulb. It's a strobe with no modifiers at all, and that's going to evenly light the background to give me that high key look I'm going for. All right, now let's take a shot. All right, so now that is moving us much closer to the high key look. All right, now where else do you see shadows? If my goal is high key, well, I'm looking and I see some shadows underneath the chin, maybe a little bit underneath the nose. Now these are not necessarily bad. Shadows add sculpting, they add dimension, they add shape to the face, so I don't necessarily mind these shadows. But let's say that I wanna go super glowing and high key and ethereal. Well, this is an opportunity to add a reflector. Now popping that reflector underneath her chin, I can have a white reflector just to lift up and soften the shadows a little bit or silver if I really want to eliminate those shadows and give me a little bit more contrast to the image. So in the first shot, I've used a white reflector. And you'll notice that the shadows are brightened a bit, but you don't really notice the reflector is there. It just kind of lifts up the shadows. But now when I switch over to a silver reflector, you'll see bright catch lights in her eyes and a lot more contrast and light to fill in those shadows. Neither one is right or wrong. It just depends on what you're going for. So the lighting setup that we have here is one of the most common beauty lighting setups and it is called clamshell lighting. One light lighting the face and a second light below so the subject's head is like the pearl and the clam. Essential clamshell lighting, high key because of the white background and minimal shadows. Now before I shoot, I do wanna talk a little bit about my camera gear and I am shooting with the Canon R5 and my lens choice is the RF 85 millimeter 1.2. This is many photographers go to portrait lens because it has beautiful compression. And when I wanna grab a narrow depth of field, I mean that 1.2 lens is sharp and beautiful. All right, so now I've got that beautiful high key lighting, got the right camera gear, so let me grab the shot. Okay, you look great. Perfect. Can you give me a couple of smiles, a couple of giggles? Good. So cute. Okay, so we've got some beautiful high key shots. Now it's time to go the exact opposite. We need to introduce some shadows and some drama. All right, so let's begin first by removing the reflector. 
All right, so that gives us a little bit more shadows, but that's not nearly dramatic enough. Now, right now I have that white background. I know that I'm not going to want the background to be pure white, so I am going to use a background light, but let me turn it off for the time being until we get our main light in place. Let me just flip that off. All right, so there are several different ways that I can introduce more shadows through the main light. One of the ways is to move the light further off to the side. That introduces more shadows and more dimension. But I wanna show you one of my favorite ways to create more shadow and image, and that is adding a grid. So what grids do fundamentally is they narrow the beam of light. They prevent the spread of the light. Now, what it also has a side effect of doing is it makes it so that less light will reach the background. I have many, many tutorials that go much more in depth into grids. So I'm going to begin by adding a grid to my beauty dish. So not only did I turn the background light off, but when I add the grid to the beauty dish, that background is going to go nearly black. So I've darkened the background. We've gotten rid of the fill reflector, but how can I make this even more low key, even more dramatic? What we're going to do is we're going to create something called short light. That means when I move that main light further around to the side, at some point, the shadows are actually pointed towards camera instead of away. The reason it's called short light is the light on her face, the actual illumination, it appears short, like it's smaller. And so I'm gonna move that light all the way around to the side and it's going to create a ton of shadow and a ton of sculpting. Great, and then we turn this way for me. Perfect, right there, great. So let me grab a shot. Beautiful, that's perfect. All right, so let's take a look at the changes here. Now, when I move the light off to short light position, you can see that there's still beautiful exposure, beautiful light on her face, but there is a lot of shadow now, which of course is moving us far in that direction of low key. But you'll also notice that the background appears black. Now, in the previous shot, the background was a little bit of a darker gray, and that's because some of the main light was still reaching that white background. But now that we move the light off to the side, all of the light is kicking the opposite direction of the background, and so it becomes pure black. So this is giving me quite a low key look. However, right now we're only using one strobe. Sure, I could do that, but I actually think we'd benefit and have a little bit more of a refined image by adding our second strobe. So one thing I could do is add the second strobe as a rim light to carve her out from the background. So I add a little bit more depth and dimension. But I actually think in this case, I want to use my second strobe as a background light. Now I do not want to light that entire background white. It defeats the purpose of my low key image. Instead, I'm just looking for some separation. So we're going to do the same thing we did to the beauty dish. We added a grid there to narrow the light. We're going to also add a grid to our background light. And what that'll do is it'll create just a little bit of light, just a little bit of halo behind my subject, just enough to give us separation, but still maintaining that low key look. All right, we've added the grid and you can see behind her head that there's just that beautiful gradient, beautiful halo of light. Now, I could have just used one strobe, but I actually think this looks a little bit more refined and I think she kind of looks more heavenly and more glowing. All right, so I like the drama that's going on here and so I'm gonna grab a couple of shots of this moodier, more intense look. Okay, just like that's beautiful. So now let's compare our two shots. The first image we have high key, minimal shadows, flat light, main light around to the front, white background. And now our second image, low key, main light off to the side, a lot of shadows and dimension, and just a little bit of kiss of light on the background. One is predominantly lighter tones, one is predominantly darker tones. So which one is better? And the thing is, you can't say, it all depends on your intention. There is no one image better than the other. Remember the adjectives I said in the beginning? Do you want the image to be upbeat and ethereal and glowing? Well, that'd be high key setup. Or do you want it to be mysterious and dark? Well, that would be this low key setup. And so whenever you approach a shoot, you should go in knowing your intentions and the mood you are trying to convey. So what I want you to notice is that these two setups, although they look completely different, involved actually pretty subtle changes. Adding grids and moving the main light off to the side. So if you understand the tools available to you, you can make drastically different looking images in a very short period of time. All right, so now you understand the differences and ways to achieve both high key and low key lighting. So if you wanna know the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit Adorama.com. And I'm definitely going to suggest that you guys should subscribe because if you wanna know more about lighting, more about fashion and beauty, I've got a lot more videos coming your way. See you next time.